Welcome back guys. Today we are going to tackle one of my many projects that we have here in my background. I have many projects because I start them and I generally don't finish them but today we are going to finish another one. So what we are looking at today is my old Bosch GSR 12 volt nickel metal hybrid drilling machine. And my batteries are dead. Um, I know that both of them have cells that have leaked and they are not working anymore. So that's what we are going to tackle and add a couple of new cells inside. One of the packs I have already started with and I've done an attempt earlier. Uh, when I installed everything, soldered it together, one of the cells died almost immediately. I have a spare cell now so we're going to swap that out. One of the packs is getting 4 amp hour cells, the other one is getting 2.4. Original packs are 2.6. So we'll see how that work out. I first picked down the box with all the gears inside. I have many boxes like this with projects, so it's time to get them done. I start with measuring the half pack that was made since before, but had one cell go bang. Actually, it just started to leak, so it was not that dangerous, but still, something happened with the cell. Big iron, of course, because this pack was soldered. I start with removing all the plastic tabs on the batteries to make them ready for soldering or attaching to the new packs. In this pack, the 4 amp hour pack, I have this green cell that I bought uh, in a local store here in town. So that one is going to replace the faulty cell. This pack is soldered and it was done several years ago. So I try to solder this cell back to it. I'm not working with the spot weller on this pack. Cleaning everything out so I don't get any shorts and adding a little bit of tape just to make sure that this one is protected because it was very close to another tab. You could add hot glue or any kind of capped on tape or tape just to keep the cells together. And here you can see me soldering it together. It's not the nicest solder and it looks weird and that's because I did only solder on the tabs on the new batteries. But the solder joints aren't cold due to the big iron that I'm using. And if you want to see more about soldering 18650 cells or other cells, I have videos in my video list for that. The battery bank or battery itself goes back into the case and it's a very very tight fit. When you press that down, just make sure that you press it evenly down on all the cells. Because you will easily break the spot welds or the solder joints. And you can even damage the battery itself. A quick cross check that we still have the proper voltage on the battery pack and we did. Reconnecting the locking mechanism for the pack to the drill. And then attaching the top part. Just be very careful so you get the contacts out of the top. And mine click together just fine. So it's time for the screws. I like those packs here from Bosch uh, because they have four screws in each end or one screw in each end and it makes it very very simple to open it up and close it when you need to work on it. Be aware of that these screwdriver batteries are 10 years old. And the first test, note that those batteries are almost discharged and they, they are way from full. But the drill itself seems to work just fine. It's now time for the second battery and this one I will spot well because yeah I haven't started that at all. I'm using my Sonco 709A. Uh, preparing the cells by removing tabs on one of the batteries and keeping it on the other one. And then just spot welding. I'm doing several spot wells on each tab, at least four of them to make sure that I have enough contact and it holds up. 
10 batteries, so it's quite a long journey, so I'm fast forwarding a little bit. And here you can see that I need a tab that goes straight over, and I, those original one was not long enough, so I'm using one of those that I have here on the bench. Just make sure that the tabs that you are adding is thick enough. Mine is at least twice the thickness of the original battery, so it should be fine. The batteries I'm using is 20 amp rated batteries and should be good enough for this drill. When you're doing a battery pack like this on the open air or free hand, just make sure that the batteries are aligned quite nice because otherwise it might not fit into the package. This here is a little bit trickier because we are going to stack two batteries on top of each other. I have not done that before so it was a little bit of a trial and error. But I think I got it to work out in the end. Unfortunately, my hand is in the way. Trimming the excess of course to make sure that we don't get any shorts. And I'm using my trusty snipper for that. It works really really good for this thin type of nickel strips. Uh, adding it up to the pack, I should most likely have added it up before I attached the second cell, but this worked out rather good as well. The pack is turned over and you can now see that it started to look like the original pack. Adding some tape just around it to keep it sturdy and uh, tight together and it's now time to remove the top part that contacts or connects to the drill itself so I'm just cutting off that cell with the wire and everything uh, adding some solder on the solder joints makes it a little bit easier to get away so now what I'm doing is removing the temperature sensor from the contact and I need to do that to get hold of the spot welded part that is to the battery. And this was tricky. There is two spot welds holding this to it, but those spot welds was so damn hard to get off. I think it took me like five minutes to pry them off. I used a snipper and a screwdriver and everything to get them loose, but in the end I got them loose. Um, I removed the tab that I cut off before and then I'm go back and press fit or try fit it. Uh, I did take my spot weld and try to spot weld this back together again but the tabs were so thick that it didn't matter. I used my spot weld the Sunco 709 on maximum and nothing happened. So I ended up soldering it instead and that worked just fine. Just make sure that you have a good enough soldering iron for doing this. Adding back the temperature sensor again, of course. And we are ready to get the pack back. Almost. The last tab, of course, first. And now we are ready. And this one fitted even better than the first one, and that's because when soldering it, I had a little bit of a problem to get them to align. Cross-check that we have the correct voltages, and we do have the correct voltages on the pack. The locking mechanism go back in as well. And then the top. In this case I have a little bit of problem to get it in, so I had to use a screwdriver to pry it a little bit and then it clicked into place. Screwing it back together again. And we are ready to try it out. And this one seemed to work just as fine as the other one. So now I can put them into the charges and test them out properly. 
I'm really happy with the result and this screwdriver can hopefully live a couple of more years. It is beaten up but it has been doing a lot of work for me here and this was my one of my first real screwdrivers I bought. As you can see it was rather rusty screws and that's because they had been in a box with a leaking cell that I had left. So guys this was a quickie. I fixed my screwdriver the old one with nickel metal hybrid batteries. No I did not convert to lithium ion batteries this time because if I do that I need to change the charging and everything. I did have spare batteries because I bought them several years ago and as you can see the first one I already have tried once but I had one faulty battery from the start so I changed that out and then the second one I did spot weld together. So I hope you liked this video and I'll see you next time, bye.